So many things go into the preparation of Christmas. Shopping, cleaning, baking, and the list goes on. I'm very excited about the season and I hope you are too. But what better way to spend the holiday than with friends and family? You can do that right here at Paradise Found Villa located in Mount Irvin. Let's have a look at what's to come in the next half hour. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Highlights from Tobago Day Awards 2016. Details on the recommissioning of the Goodwood Community Center and later, we take you to the Parenting Workshop graduation. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Tropicus Beach Hotel has been in existence since 1979. Our mandate is to be the number one tourism product here in Tobago. We achieve this through the high quality service from our staff, through continuous upgrade of our plant, which include the rooms and our grounds. Our guests on leaving are totally satisfied and they always promise that they would return. I'm Anderson McPhee, General Manager of Tropicus Beach Hotel and tourism is all a we thing. So this week we're exploring Paradise Found Villa. Construction of the property began over 20 years ago and it became a visible landmark as it occupies a prime area and overlooks the Mount Irvin Beach facility. Now our lead story this week has details of an event that appreciated an outstanding group of people who have contributed to the development of Tobago. Caroline Wallace has the details in this report. The real reason for being here this evening to celebrate and honor deserving Tobagonians who have confronted and overcome challenges and excelled by maximizing the fullest potential of their talents. The second Tobago Day Awards recognized several Tobagonians for their work in various sectors. The awardees contributed to business, culture, music and academics, and the public service. Tobago's most notable Calypsonians, MacArthur Sandy Lewis, better known as Calypso Rose, and Winston Bailey, the Mighty Shadow, received the Tobago Medal of Honor Gold for distinguished and outstanding service in the sphere of culture and Calypso. Neil Wilson was the other Tobago Medal of Honor Gold recipient in the sphere of business. For exceptional service and sport, Paralympic gold medalist Akeem Stewart received the Tobago Medal of Honor Silver. Also receiving the Tobago Medal of Honor Silver were Cynthia Lyons Duke and Carol Alfred for long and meritorious service to Tobago in the public service. One award was presented posthumously. Boyson Jackie Johnson was recognized for loyal and devoted service in music. His Tobago Medal of Honor Bronze was collected by Cynthia Johnson. Young musician Justin Peterkin got the Chief Secretary's Award for significant achievement in 2016 in the spheres of music and academics. His dad, Carlos Peterkin, accepted on his behalf. Justin also received the Calypso Rose Award for the Performing Arts. The last award for the evening, the Shadow Award for Oral Tradition, went to Shiva Alexander. I'm saying to all of us that this is a period when we as Tobagonians can take pride in our heritage, we can reflect on our challenges and setbacks, and of course we can celebrate our triumphs and our heroes. Live entertainment brought the curtains down on Tobago D 2016. Say, what can make me feel this way, my girl? My girl, my girl. Talking about my girl, my girl. for Let's Talk Tobago. The name of the property was inspired from a play from Milton's book. However, instead of feeling that paradise is lost as demonstrated in the play, guests often feel as if they have found their paradise right here on this beautiful island of Tobago. Together, everyone can achieve more. The Tobago Wonders Challenge, hosted for the first time in commemoration of Tobago Day, did just that. Clues were spread across the island and success was determined by how well you work as a team. 
Here's more in this report. This was the start of the Tobago Wonders Challenge. Over 35 teams of four participants put their knowledge of the island's history and culture to the test. It took them to Fort King George, the Assembly Legislature, the Pembroke Heritage Park, and seven other locations. At the end of the challenge, Pink Diamonds Hunters took the $25,000 first prize. Second place went to Bagos on a mission, and third place was 4D. Participants will expect to go all around the island and indulge, immerse, and um, involve themselves in different challenges all, all around the island, um, especially where our natural wonders exist. The competitors also made stops at the Rainforest, Moriah, Plymouth, Black Rock, Buku, Shore Park Complex, and the Milford Road Esplanade in Scarborough. Teams worked together to figure out clues, take photographs, and collect evidence of their journey around the island. The event was a part of the Tobago Day celebrations. Basically, the challenge was introduced this year because we were looking at being different. Um, it's no longer THA Day, it's now Tobago Day as we know. And we have to celebrate Tobago on a whole. And no matter what, when we look at it, Tobago, we speak about the wonders of the world, and I think Tobago has its own wonders. The inaugural event had 50 teams registered. Various NGOs, the police and the fire services, and the THA divisions, such as the Department of Information and TEMA, were represented. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Paradise Found Villa is a bit different from all the other properties we've done as the pool is inside. Guests now have the advantage of privacy as they have a splash of fun with their loved ones. If that's not enough, then don't worry. You can take a cool stroll down to the Mount Irvin Beach facility and participate in any water sport you choose. Now customers are critical to any business. Without them, business would not exist. That's why the divisions of the Tobago House of Assembly took time out to appreciate the people who make their work worthwhile. Here are the details in this next report. Tobago Day 2016 wasn't just a day of activities. It was a week-long experience to celebrate all that's unique about Tobago and the contributions of outstanding Tobagonians in the past. Throughout the week, divisions of the Tobago House of Assembly took the time to appreciate their customers through several displays. It's also an opportunity for entrepreneurship and to allow people to see what has been happening inside the division from the inside and not necessarily as we would have done it before on the outside. So today is an expression of art of the work of the staff who really got together to show the customer appreciation side of it. Over at the Division of Settlements and Labor, employees shared information on its various programs with the public. We've laid out our foyer and turn information space. So we've allowed our customers to readily access our information so they can come through and, um, and get information on our subsidies and our grants, as well as on our labor, counseling, and our job bank as well. The Office of the Chief Secretary distributed locally grown fruits and vegetables to those who visited and explained the role of each of its units. And visitors thoroughly enjoyed the week. The setup here is very nice. I'll um, encourage persons to come down and get um, get on board with the cake. They also have nice activities and the, the staff is very friendly. It was really interesting to see the progress, the development, not only for students but the staff as well. I really commend the secretary and the assistant secretary for the work they have done and for us celebrating Tobago Day, commemorating it. Tobago Day 2016 ran from November 28th to December 4th. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk to Tobago. On the other side of the break, recommissioning of the Goodwood Community Center. Don't move. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. They say it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters the most. And in the face of disaster, chaos, and panic, it is the Tobago Emergency Management Agency's comprehensive emergency response plans that will matter most to Tobago. This agency's modernized approach to emergency management is driven by technology, powered by networking, focused on community resilience, open to partnering, 
enhanced through training and led by a highly competent and dedicated staff. This has positioned them as one of the premier disaster management agencies in the region and earned them Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard Certification. Congrats, TEMA, Tobago Emergency Management Agency. Thank you for staying with us. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Now, Paradise Found Villa is the ideal place for you to spend the Christmas holidays with your loved ones. Here's why. A review on TripAdvisor indicates that visitors did not want to leave as the location of the property is out of this world. In addition, the villa offers the finest standards of accommodation. Now, as we're in the spirit of giving, this next report has details of one community that received an early Christmas gift from the Division of Community Development and Culture. Here's more in this report. Residents of Goodwood got an early Christmas gift as the Goodwood Community Center was recently recommissioned. They're excited to have the use of the facility once again. The upgrades now mean they can host community activities and programs in secure and comfortable amenities. When we assumed the village council a couple of years ago, we had no lights, water rate amounting to thousands of dollars, poor plumbing, flooding, unsecured water tanks, unsound roof. The group had to devote their time to cleaning and maintaining the center. There was some doubt that the repairs could be completed before the new year. But the people of Goodwood can now plan events on their Christmas calendar. There were a number of challenges with the roof, a number of challenges with plumbing, a number of challenges with the electricity and other issues. And therefore, at one point in time, it looked as if the refurbishment of the Goodwood Community Center would not have been achieved in this first term of office. But of course, this division gave the commitment. The facility is equipped with a computer room, air conditioning units, and excellent bathroom facilities. In all, there are 36 community centers and five multipurpose facilities across the island. They are meant to house activities and programs that will contribute to the development of their respective communities. The Goodwood Community Centre is one of many to be recommissioned for the year. Within the last month, community centres at Hope, Bell Garden, Canaan Bonacord, Carnby and Wim have been upgraded and recommissioned. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. This property reflects a blend of modern luxury and colonial comfort. Guests often comment on the tranquility of the setting as it encourages them to completely slow down, keep calm and forget about the hustle and bustle of their busy lives. Now, speaking of setting, students of the Bishop's High School now have a place to have their meals and watch their favorite sports as the latest addition to the school is finally completed. Keyshawn Wilson has the details. Have a look. Bishop's High School students now have a space where they can eat in comfort. And for the football fans, standing on the sidelines isn't their only option. The school recently opened its newly constructed cafeteria and pavilion. The Bishopians Alumni Association saw the project to fruition from concept to finish. It's all to ensure today's these students have the facilities they need to succeed at school. A cafeteria is an important place for nourishing and nurturing our young students and nurturing on several levels. We had a dream of a state-of-the-art facility, functional and beautiful, where students would dine in comfort and class. We also envisaged a multi-purpose facility that would overlook the playing field and provide happy accommodation for students to enjoy school sports and recreational activities. Downstream energy giant PCS Nitrogen Trinidad Limited contributed $1.6 million to construct the facilities. The Tobago House of Assembly also supported the project. Although the buildings were recently constructed, the project had been planned for a long time. The conceptual beginning of this project, um, in, in fact it probably started almost 10 years ago, was born out of the idea of preserving an iconic structure that impacted several generations of students in a meaningful and I dare say indelible manner. We felt that this is an iconic building that we had to do something with. 
and it was bolstered by the need to make it utilitarian and a lifelong experience for the students who would inherit the space. Secretary of Community Development and Culture, Dr. Denise Sawyer Fat Angus, is another proud alum of Bishop's High School. She says the project could only have been successful through collaboration and teamwork. I am impressed with the spirit of the Bishopians alumni group because you recognized the need and took a decision to do something about it. It shows the positive power of working as a team with a unified objective. You determined that you would not simply rely on handouts. The completion of this pavilion and cafeteria demonstrates that we are beginning to reconnect with the concept of collaboration and partnership in, building, in the building of a successful society. The project began in November 2015 with the demolition of the old music room building. It was formerly known as Trotman House. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Paradise Found Villa sleeps 12 persons comfortably as it has five bedrooms and five ensuite bathrooms allowing guests to enjoy their accommodation with all the privacy of this vacation home. Now listen to this. The Tobago Word Festival is a nine-day festival that featured a variety of events that included spoken word and screening of local films. Omadara Mills fills us in with this report. There are few more recognizable names in Trinidad and Tobago than Winston Anthony Bailey, the Mighty Shadow. The veteran Calypsonian was one of the three honorees at this year's Tobago Wood Festival Literacy Hall of Fame Awards ceremony. Musician Roel Axback Titus was also recognized for his contributions to the written and spoken word in Tobago. Educator and dramatist Cheryl Birchwood Uzuru Tabiti also made the list. We recognize that Tobago has a very rich history. So, so, and our rich history includes the spoken word in terms of what you see now in terms of the spoken word festivals and those types of things, but also the way we do our drama and the way we talk and the way we behave and all of that. It's part of our rich history. So we wanted to ensure that there was an avenue for Tobagonians to appreciate what we have and to see that, you know, this is, an, this is an opportunity to go ahead. This is an opportunity to move forward. The nine-day festival featured poetry and spoken word events, screenings of locally made films, and even a superhero story competition. Its workshops are also helping children and adults find their voice through writing. Well, Tobagonians have an opportunity to understand that writing or words are important. And we want to do it in a way where it's, it's fun. Because I think for far too long we've been beaten into, you know, to, to go and do your schoolwork. And it's done as a punishment kind of thing and, and we want to let Tobagonians know that you know what writing is fun, reading is fun and we can do this for fun and there are opportunities to make money from it too. The festival also featured writings with acclaimed Jamaican writer Olive Senior, the 2016 winner of the OCM Bokas Prize for Caribbean Literature. The event was spearheaded by the Empowerment Foundation of Tobago. Because in many instances, many of the books that we've been introduced to as children do not relate to our culture, do not relate to, you know, the people in the books do not look like us, they do not sound like us, they do not behave like us. And that's one of the reasons we recognize that children may not be drawn towards reading and may not be drawn towards writing. So we've made an effort to ensure that the people we highlight are people who look and sound like us. Organizers for the Tobago Word Festival teamed up with the NGC Bocas Lit Fest Tobago to host the events. Sponsors for the events included the National Gas Company and the Tobago House of Assembly. It's hoped these events will help to improve the level of literacy on the island. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, we take you to the parenting workshop graduation. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back.
It actually started for me 13 years ago when I worked as a CSR at Club Pigeon Point, which is now known as the Pigeon Point Heritage Park. I knew that I had a knack for being a guide. When I started talking to different people from all different walks of life and just telling them about our culture, the history, the food. I am Katya and Grant, a trained tour guide and tourism is all our team. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Paradise Villa was constructed to make maximum use of Mount Irvin Bay. Each room opens out to reveal a view of the Caribbean Sea, Buku Reef and the famous Pigeon Point, which is noted for being one of the best beaches in Tobago. Now what better way to close off a program than with a graduation? After weeks of intense training, participants of the Citizen Security Program Parenting Workshop finally completed their training. Here's more in this report. Have a look. Colleen Brebner has two children. She wants to ensure that she can help them develop into well-rounded adults. That's why Mrs. Brebner participated in the Positive Parenting Workshop, which she says has changed the way she relates to her children. I've become a better listener and I'm working on my communication skills, really getting to understand the difference in my children and being able to understand and to be aware of their specific needs. So um, I'm really, I'm still working on it, but I've seen an improvement and I'm also learning to be patient because parenting is, it's on the job training. You don't get everything right overnight. So I've learned to be patient and to grow each and every day. Participants learned about the stages of child development. The program also helped them identify age-appropriate and effective means of discipline. They also had frank discussions about situations they may need help to resolve. The whole issue of uh, developing proper parenting skill, um, understanding the child, uh, the uniqueness of the child, how to relate to children, giving them the opportunity to be able to share with you and seeing things not only from the parent's perspective but also from the child's perspective and the whole is of therefore developing the harmony within the home to advance the development of the family itself and the children. I think that stood out for me. The 10-week sessions are helping people from the Bethel, Bonacord and Darrell Spring communities enhance their family life. These are the target areas of the Citizens Security Program. The organization believes better family relationships can help reduce the number of crimes in these communities. Not that we have bad parents out there, but we have parents who are now struggling with certain socioeconomic conditions that made it very difficult. So sometimes, as well-intentioned as we are, we were having challenges. There really isn't a school that teaches us how to be parents. And it's probably the single most important job that we have to grow and to train the mind of another individual and make them ready to function in society and to continue the journey of self-development. Almost 50 persons graduated from the third installment of the workshop. It was hosted by the Citizens Security Program, CSP, and facilitated by Families in Action. CSP's efforts to create safer communities in Tobago are being supported by the Tobago House of Assembly. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This villa is 15 minutes away from the ANR Robinson International Airport. It's in close proximity to the Buku community, which is famous for its Sunday school festivities and goat races. Now, the annual tree lighting at the Botanical Gardens is one way to tell that Christmas time is near. Lights and ornaments of every style and color have decorated the gardens to light the way of joy to all who visit. Here are the details in this very bright report. Christmas lights in every style have been wrapped around the trees at the Scarborough Botanical Gardens. High and low, no tree was spared. And they've been switched on by the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment. This is our 12th year and we will continue to undertake and bring Yuletide cheer to the people of Tobago. This event not only coincides with the Tobago Day activities, it also ushers in the Christmas season for us here on the island. The division wants to spread the love of the Christmas season to all on the island 
both residents and visitors. This tree lighting ceremony does not only signify the lighting of the world and the Christmas season, but should also cause us to reflect on the way we should live on earth. What a spectacle. It was the 12th annual tree lighting at the Scarborough Botanical Gardens. The lights will be turned on every day from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. until January 6, 2017. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Now it's time for our Have Your Say segment. My question for you this week. As a customer, what do you think makes good service? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. All right, good customer service to me would be when the person who is selling you something, uh, the merchant, they treat you with respect. You know, you go to them to buy something, they treat you probably like if you're the last person on earth. You know, treat you really nice and energetic because remember you're spending your money and you want quality. It's all about passion, caring about your job, going the extra mile, following up and giving feedback. Even if the answer is something negative, like let's say something was done and you have to give the person feedback and it's negative, take the time to let them know. Training of the uh, sales clerks or person in office uh, courtesy towards others who would um, who they are dealing with. The attitude of the seller. You must treat that person with respect. That whole thing of being polite and alert to what is happening. Of course, we must know again that um, without the customer there is no business. So the customer comes first. You know, I also think that there is need for training. Let me big up the TTHTI. So we in Tobago, we need to do better if we intend to be a better tourist destination. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Cultural Explosion 2016. We hope you enjoy. Watching you a long time now, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I want to hear you sing a Everything, about, Everything you about you seems, you so, seems, so, seems so, so brand so new. Brand say, new. but I'm not going to say a thing to Vega because I want you to know. Sing us. I love you.